Today we're gonna to be covering a pretty big topic in the van life world, which is what van layout is right for you. And we quickly wanted to say thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. So if you are thinking about building your own van as a DIYer or hiring a builder to build a van for you, we wanted to help you kickstart the layout design process. This is the number one topic that I talk about on our consult calls with potential clients or people in our van layout guide community. Because to date we have now built 11 vans. Working on our 12th. And 13th and 14th. <laughs> So we have learned a lot through 11 van builds, nine of which have been custom builds for clients. And we wanted to share that with you, the different layouts that we have actually built for our clients, which are all included in our van layout guide program. We get so many questions about the height of a countertop, the depth of a counter countertop, how big are our upper cabinets. So we have actually compiled all of that information into our van layout guide program. So you get access to all of those specs and in addition to that, you also get access to our private Facebook group. Now, we get hit up with messages, DMs, emails every single day to the point that we cannot respond to everybody. So because of that, we have developed this private Facebook group and we prioritize responding to those messages in that Facebook group. It is amazing. There's a ton of activity. We get to follow all the people that are building their own vans. They get to kick ideas around, ask questions and not only get answers from us, but get answers from other DIYers who are building their own vans as well. So there's a link down below for our van layout guide. And again, you get to join the community with us. And it is really, really fun getting to see everybody's van builds in there. So we hope to see you inside the Facebook group as well. And now let's jump into layouts. layouts. All right. Yeah. So we quickly wanted to talk about kind of the general how to plan your layout. And then we're gonna talk about each one of our different layouts that we've come up with, the floor plans that we have in our van layout guide that we have found really work best for certain situations. We're gonna go through some pros and cons. Mm -hmm. So before that, let's just jump into, number one, the no most important thing to figure out your layout is which van are you building in? Yep. Are you building in a Sprinter, a Promaster, a Transit? Maybe something smaller than one of those, but those are the three main yeah. ones that have the high roofs that you can stand up in. So that overall wheelbase length of your van is gonna determine your floor plan. Right, because I have calls with people who are always, they're torn between a 144 Sprinter, a 170, a 170 Extended. Do they want a Promaster? What are the pros and cons here? And the number one thing I tell everybody is go test drive all of them. Especially if you're gonna be transitioning into full-time living or extended travel, it's not just gonna be something that you're gonna be sleeping in, but it's gonna be your everyday driver. So you wanna make sure that it's something you feel really comfortable driving and that you enjoy driving. Step one. <laughs> that is step one. Step two is once you figure out which van that you're picking and what you're buying, you wanna measure the inside of your van and work from the back to the front. What kind of usable space do you have? We like starting in the back because that's typically where your bed is gonna go and that's gonna be the biggest kind of feature in your layout. So determine how big will be comfortable for your bed. We actually, in our first van, laid down on the floor. We're like, could we sleep in this? So maybe you wanna do the same thing to determine how long you want your bed to be, because originally we were gonna go with a shorter bed. Well, we were gonna sleep side to side. Yeah. And we laid side to side in our sprinter and realized yeah. we can't sleep this way. Yeah, so you wanna make sure it's gonna be comfortable. Also, in the back of the van, in addition to your bed, you also have storage space. Because whether you're planning on a full-time bed or something like our outdoorsman layout or just our beach house layout with a convertible table bed in the back, you're gonna have storage back there, whether it's upper cabinets or whether it's a garage. So identifying what it is you're gonna be storing in your van and what your priorities are for storage is gonna help you determine what sort of a bed, garage, storage space you're gonna need back there. Now the next big feature that's gonna take up quite a bit of space is your bathroom. Now, if you've ever seen any of our van builds, we've literally built a bathroom into every single van. And there's a big reason why. Number one is a lot of people are gonna be living this full time or traveling for extended periods of time. So they wanna be able to be comfortable and feel like this is a house, right? So they want all the creature comforts of a home, which includes a shower and a toilet. Now, especially as a female, it's a little bit different. I really wanted to have that indoor toilet to not have to go try to find somewhere late at night to go to the bathroom before I went to bed. And so that's why we've always built it in. Now, the reason why we've also built it as a shower toilet combo is because we've seen a lot of designs out there 
where you lift up a countertop, pull out some shower curtain, wrap around something, and then you're supposed to get in there and shower with a shower curtain like wrapped around you. I don't know if you ever tried to shower like that, but to me that sounds pretty miserable, like shower curtain sticking to me and I'm like all wet and then things are splashing all over. <laughs> and so we just don't think functionality wise, that's great. Also, if it's late at night and you're like, man, I just feel like I really wanna take a shower and you have to have this whole five to 10 minute process to set up your shower, you're gonna be frustrated. It's so nice just being able to hop into a bathroom, take a quick shower and jump into bed. And that is why we build in a bathroom in every single one of our vans. Right, the goal for the functionality of our wet bath is that you don't have to set up or take down anything in order to pee mm -hmm. or in order to take a shower. And you have some privacy. And Alex and I had the conversation when, before we lived in a van that we did not want to see each other on the toilet. Just straight up, that is something that keeps this marriage alive. <laughs> Some things should just stay in the bathroom. Yeah, some things should just be sacred space. So we do not like the toilet pulls out from under the bed and you're sitting in front of your kitchen going to the bathroom. That also is just, just hygienically, <laughs> like yeah. why do you want to take a crap right next to your kitchen? Yeah, next to your sink. Yeah, like you shouldn't be able to take a crap and scramble eggs at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I just don't really get it. But yeah, you know what? It's a big know. world and you're all big boys and girls and you can do whatever you want. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we are sharing our opinions and what we believe is the right fit. But again, these are things that you have to discuss mm -hmm. with your partner, your family, whoever you're doing van life with. Maybe you're doing it solo so you don't have to have these conversations. If I were doing it solo, I could see having a toilet pull out. But because we were doing it as a couple yeah. and we have dogs, we just wanted that space to yeah. be able to go into our own bathroom. And other options if you want to have the shower but you don't want to have a fixed toilet, you're thinking maybe a cassette toilet, that can shrink down the space yeah. of your shower in your layout. For example, in our floor plan, I know that the typical wet bath that we build from the front of the van to the back of the van after steel studs are in and, and plywood is on both sides of the outside walls, it takes up 45 inches from front to back of the van. So when you're laying out your van, you've got your bed, how much space is that gonna take? You've got your bathroom, how much space is that gonna take? A kitchen typically is the other large portion that you're gonna have built into your layout because you're trying to probably squeeze a sink and a fridge into that Potentially space. Potentially a stove if you wanna go that route. Potentially a, a stove if you wanna waste countertop space. <laughs> um, or an Someone's oven. Someone's opinionated over here. Yeah, I've got strong opinions. <laughs> But those are kind of the major things you're laying out and everything else, it's what space do I have left over and what can I do with that? Am I gonna build a closet, you know, a floor to ceiling, Jack and Jill closet with two, you know, a closet up above, a closet down below. That's something that we've done a lot for couples yep. that are traveling in a van or living in a van full time. Are you gonna be able to fit a dresser in? The big benefit of a dresser is then you have an additional countertop, countertop space. Yep. Um, Do you need an extra seat or are you a family that we haven't even gone down the family route? We ooh. will talk about the family van layout. Just to quickly recap and then we'll jump into each one of our layouts and kind of pros and cons is again, start from the back of your van, figure out what your bed size is gonna be, figure out what your bathroom size is gonna be if you're going the bathroom route. Yeah. And then like Alex said, from there you can kind of figure out do I have room for a small dresser or closet? What else can I fit in my layout? And then how big is my kitchen gonna be? Yeah. How much do I wanna go into the sliding door if it's gonna be on the passenger side, which is typically what we do. Yeah. Quickly, before we move on, one other factor that you're gonna to wanna to think about when it comes to your layout is what are you putting in your ceiling? Are you doing a vent fan? Are you doing a uh, Fresair, the 12 volt air cooling unit that we recommend? Are you doing an AC unit because you're gonna be plugged into shore power and you really wanna be able to cool your van down? Because the placement of all of those is gonna be dependent on how far you have things coming into the middle of the van, whether you have a bathroom built in somewhere or upper cabinets or a big closet, that might affect the placement of all of those things as yep. well. So you really wanna have your layout dialed in before you just start cutting holes in the roof of your van and putting things like your vent fan or an AC or a, or a fresh air into your roof. Great point. Yeah, I just thought of that. <laughs> okay. So let's jump into the layouts now. So we have five different layouts in our van layout guide based on the five layouts that we offer to clients and based on what we have found works best overall in a van. And again, all each one of these has a built-in bathroom. So the five different layouts are the beach house, which is our OG van builds that we personally lived in. 
We have the outdoorsman, the seaside, the loft, and the family van, which might be our most popular. Which is also the most, <laughs> the most complicated. complicated. We're actually gonna be coming out with a modified family van layout that does not include the Happy Jack bed lift that's a little less complex for DIYers, but that's- Stay tuned. Yeah. The first two we're gonna talk about is the beach house and the seaside. These are very similar layouts. Again, built-in bathroom, they have a closet, they have a dresser, they have a big kitchen area. They have upper cabinets running the full length of both sides of the vans. And then they have the convertible table bed area. Now, we personally loved this layout because it gave us a space for a bed and it also gave us a space to hang out, eat, work, all of that, and still be really nice and comfortable. And it only takes five minutes to go from bed mode to table mode or from table mode to bed mode, vice versa. Yeah which some people think that's a big deal. For us, it wasn't, it was never ever a big deal. There were occasionally, you know, one or two days a week where we would just leave it in bed mode and kind of hang out more in like a lounge couch mode, which is another great option. Yep, so. The Seaside has an elevated seven inch kind of mini garage in between the two benches. That's great for surfboards, longboards, scooters. It's a small space, but it can slide in longer items right and that was designed specifically because we had a client that had a bunch of skateboards a longboard and a fold-up scooter that they wanted to take with them on the road and keep in the van so we designed that layout specifically for that function so if you're like a surfer or something like that you want to be able to keep a big surfboard inside this layout would work great for you anything that we took on the road with us we kept on a roof rack like our stand-up our inflatable paddle boards and stuff like that so we didn't need a ton of extra storage space for gear inside the van we wanted the upper cabinet storage in the back so that we had really functional storage to access things when we were on the road. Yep, and that's one thing to consider when you're doing a full-time bed. Those are only things that you can access if you actually go outside and open your back doors. Yeah. We personally love having all the upper cabinet storage inside with that layout because again, you can access it any time of day. You don't have to worry about people being outside watching you get your stuff. <laughs> yep. And both of the van these vans do have the kitchen on the passenger side and they also have a closet as well as a dresser. Kind of, we took some of our closet space in our van and turned that into a dog crate. So yep. that was really important for us. Next up is the outdoorsman. Now we designed this layout for two of our clients who had very expensive mountain bikes that they wanted to keep inside their van. Mm -hmm. Now it does only fit one bike. Right, these were solo guys. Solo dudes that wanted their five to $10,000 mountain bikes inside their van because they did not want to have to store those outside. So we built an elevated platform built out of 8020 that their mountain bike fit underneath that platform. It was not as high as a full-time bed, full-time garage would be. Ew, I don't even know the dimension of that, but it's I think about, it was like 18 it's inches. It's about 18 inches high. Yeah. So it wasn't that high. They could slide their bike underneath. And then on top of that, they still had the convertible table bed area. For both of these guys, it was really important to be able to sit and work. Same kind of thing like we talked about. They wanted a bed, but they also wanted a place where they could sit, have other people in their van, work, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and in these two, we did them a little bit different. If you look at the van layout guide or the tours, the kitchen is actually on the driver's side of the vehicle in the front behind the driver's seat. The only reason that we built these vans this way is, be, is that because both of these vans came to us with a semi build in them that we ripped out and rebuilt, and they had both put T vent windows in on the driver's side behind the, the driver's seat. So we wanted to be able to utilize that space instead of just putting a bathroom there or a closet like we typically do. So we did build their kitchen on that side. One of the benefits of doing this is all of their plumbing ran on one side of the vehicle. So they had their shower and their kitchen sink on the same side. So we only had to run plumbing on that one side. Typically in our other builds, we have a shower on one side and sink on the other. So plumbing is running to both sides. Next up is the loft, which is our most recent van layout that we designed for a client, Susan, who is full-time living in her van. She wanted all the extra storage underneath her garage. So this is a full-time platform bed with a huge garage that she can store extra gear. I know she wanted to get a bike. So that was really important to her to be able to have a bike and store it underneath her bed. Now in this layout, we did run upper cabinets on both sides of the van. However, we don't recommend that. That was a client request. It just makes it feel a little bit smaller and doesn't give you as much headroom when you're laying in bed or the ability to sit up and lean against the wall. She didn't have back door windows, so she is able to lean against her back door windows and kind of hang out in her bed. 
Now we did also do a small convertible table bed area for a second secondary sleeping area that you could have a guest come stay with you, but it also gives her a place that she can sit and eat mm -hmm. so she doesn't always have to sit in her bed. And then she, because of that space, she does have a smaller kitchen, smaller closet, and then still the bathroom. Still has her bathroom. Yeah. And one thing that you want to think about with these layouts, specifically, we built that one in a ProMaster, and we haven't built it in a Sprinter yet, but in a ProMaster, you're kind of limited on where you can put the bathroom in because of what's underneath the van. So after you decide which van you want to go with, make sure that you also look underneath the van to help you identify where you can put certain components of your layout, because there might be things like a muffler or a heat shield or, thing, or even just the support frame of the actual van itself that could be in the way and might make you adjust your layout a little bit. Last but not least, this is probably our number one requested client van build, is the family van. Now I giggle because it's very complex and something that we would have never felt comfortable tackling as a van build on our own if we hadn't already had like five other van builds under our belt. Now we came up with this layout and engineered this thing so that it's sturdy and strong, but if you're doing this on your own, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> consult a professional. Yeah, definitely consult a professional. <laughs> um, in our van layout guide, we do not include step-by-step -step instructions on how, how to install the Happy Jack for liability reasons. Happy Jack can kind of help you, Lipper Components, who is the manufacturer of Happy Jack, can kind of help you make sure that you're installing it in a safe way, but they're also very hard to get a hold of and because of COVID have a bunch of delays. So we've this, had to call yeah. them 1200 times just to get an order place, so. And also <laughs> this van does add the most weight of any of our builds because you are adding in an additional bench seat in the back. You're adding in the whole Happy Jack frame an additional bed and everything else that goes on top of, of the Happy Jack to make the secondary sleeping area. So the only way that you can build this van is if you are doing it in the 3500. I would never recommend that somebody build this in anything that is not at least a Sprinter 170 extended 3500 because of all of the space that it takes up inside yeah. the van and the extra weight that yeah. you're adding. It makes it feel a little bit more closed off because of the way we trim out the happy jack and frame that in. Right. So when you're in the back area, it is a little bit you know, closed off from the rest of the van, which is why we really feel it's necessary to have a 170 extended. Not only that, but this is a family van layout, so it's meant to seat and sleep four. So you're also putting in a secondary bench seat behind the driver's seat and the passenger seat for two more riders. Yeah. So not only do you have that extra space up front that's just to ride four people, you then have you know the whole conversion back end that you have to think about. So a lot of people have asked, would you build that in a 170? And the answer is no. We would not build this in a regular 170. We really feel like you need the 170 extended, which is the largest cargo van out there. Yeah. I don't think there's anything bigger. And you really need that size to be able to fit this floor plan into it. Yeah, you're literally cramming as much into a van <laughs> as you possibly can with both of these vans that we have built for the clients. Um, one van we built, we really used as little space as possible for the bench seat. The other van the clients wanted, they took giant to Toyota Sienna, uh, like captain's chairs from a minivan and installed them on a track that was movable. Um, they had like kickback leg rests and all that good stuff. Um, and that huge. took up a ton of room in their yeah. layout and really sacrificed how much storage space they had left inside the van. So um, if you have kids and you're thinking about van life, can they sleep in a tent? <laughs> yeah, I would say the family van, though it does seat and sleep four, you're sacrificing a lot of storage because of the Happy Jack bed. You have two beds in the back, so there are no upper cabinets back there. There's no garage area. Your benches down below are housing your electrical and your plumbing, so there's no extra room down there. Then you've got your kitchen. You know, you have some storage there, but depending on if you're doing a built-in stove top or oven, that's gonna take up even more room. You do have the upper cabinets ab above the kitchen, and then you have the upper cabinets above the two seats in the back. 
and then you can do a headliner shelf for more storage and we had a small closet above the fridge in yeah. both of the family vans that we built but the storage is very limited in that van yeah so just a teaser for how we're going to be changing this van for our next personal van because if you saw one of our most recent videos we have a 2018 170 extended that we're going to be converting into a van for ourselves to travel in and also rent out to people who are interested in trying van life and we are going to be changing it to get rid of the happy jack and actually adding in a bench seat in the back that converts into a bed so instead of having that secondary sleeping area above the primary bed in the back the seat that the kids will be sitting on as we're traveling will also fold and turn into a bed as well so that is an option that people can think about if you're like okay how can i do this so that the build is simpler it's going to cost me less money although the seats like that can be expensive um, but that's just an easier DIY build than trying to build a happy jack van all on your own. The one thing to consider if you have young kids like we will have is you are going to have to move their car seats. But if you have the latch install on a car seat, that really doesn't take long. It takes like one minute to yeah. pull them out. So, um, that is something we will have to do every single night. There will be a process and you know, we'll let you know how that goes. <laughs> that's something that we're willing to do because we feel that that's the best layout for our family. Yes. Now again, you have to weigh the pros and cons of each one of these layouts for yourself and what's going to work best for your lifestyle. If you're traveling with other people, you have to consider their needs. And so it really is, you know, sit down, think about it go over you know, what, what specifics you're gonna have in your van build, your bed, your bathroom, your kitchen, all that kind of stuff. And if you're, again, looking for specific dimensions on all of this so you can really nail down your floor plan, we do have our van layout guide down below. This was fun. Yeah, this is a good Just one. a little conversation between friends talking about <laughs> layouts. So we also put all of this information with more pros and cons in a blog post linked down below, which is on our Squarespace website. One of our favorite features about Squarespace is how intuitive the back end is to use. We did not have to do any crazy programming to set up our own blog. And it's really easy to add photo galleries, to add bullet point lists, to add Amazon affiliate links, all of that inside of blog posts. So if you are thinking of building a website to document your travels or your van build, or you're just a small business owner, who's looking for a way to put your business online and not have to hire somebody to develop or build your website for you. You want the control on the back end. Squarespace is a great option for you. Again, like Sarah said, it is super intuitive. It's a very functional and easy to use back end. And you're just going to get a beautiful mobile responsive website on the front side. Yeah. One compliment we get from you guys all the time is how professional our website looks. And that is all thanks to Squarespace. So if you want to sign up, head to squarespace.com for a free two-week trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com forward slash 40 hours for 10% off your purchase of a website or domain. Okay. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring another video. That is it for now. Leave your comments and questions down below. And we hope to see you in our Van Layout Guide community. And that's Thanks it for, for now. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Bye.